Hey everybody, welcome to Jill's Creative Side. I'm so glad that you're here with me today. Um, I just want to welcome everybody that's new to the group. Um, as you know, uh, this is Jill's Creative Side in my Facebook group, but I always um, download my videos into YouTube because I also have a YouTube channel. So if you're watching this on YouTube, I would love it if you like these videos to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and turn your notifications on so you don't miss any videos. So, um, if you're in my Facebook group watching this, make sure you comment on this live, whether it be live or whether it just be a replay, because that'll get you an entry into the giveaway. If you're watching this on YouTube and you're curious about the giveaway, that only happens in my private Facebook group. So come and join that. I will put the link to that group in the comments. It's Jill's creative side on Facebook. And, um, get in that group. And also, if you want to earn ways for the giveaway that I try to do every month, I'm really behind right now and I'm going to do the giveaway um, probably this coming week for February, March, and April. And the ways you get entered is you subscribe to my YouTube channel, but if you subscribe, make sure you tell me so I can give you credit. Um, follow me on Instagram, Jill Yvonne Photo. Comment on the lives, whether it be live or replay. Comment on the videos and post the craft that you're working on because I love to see what you guys are doing. So let's get started. First, what we're going to do today is we're going to do three projects. First, it's going to be um, we're going to use the torch paste and we're going to do some wood burning on the um, what did I do? Oh, on the wood pieces and these pieces here. We're going to be using these. These came from Amazon, and I will link all of this below. Um, we have this shape that came from Hobby Lobby, along with this shape that came from Hobby Lobby, and these that came from Hobby Lobby. And these are all, um, there's nothing on them. If you're going to do wood burning or putting any kind of heat on these, make sure that you don't have anything on there. Don't stain them first, because that's not good. Don't You don't want to stain them. So just use them plain as they are. We're going to do wood burning. We're going to use some Cricut Infusible Ink on here, and we're also going to be using um, some scrapbook paper to make some with decoupage or Mod Podge. So I have a couple picked out that we're gonna be using so that we're gonna do all that. So I have my heat press um, heating up to 400 degrees right now, and I know the first time that I did the wood burning it was an epic fail because I didn't let them dry enough before I clamped the heat press. So I have one that has an arm and it's over here out of the frame so you can't see it, but it, it's what you do shirts on. It has a clamp arm on it. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm only going to, once I get these um, torch paste put on these, I'm going to let them dry for a few minutes and then I'm gonna lower the lid to about maybe this much without touching the, the pieces for 20 seconds, or I think it was 40 seconds, um, to dry these before I clamp them because the first time I did it, the parchment paper stuck. You don't wanna do that. Um, so I'm just using regular parchment paper. Um, this works really good. I know that in the um, infusible ink, it comes with, um, what is it called? It comes with paper. Um, it's not parchment paper, but it's, oh my goodness, I can't think of what it's called. But they all have it in there. Good grief, my mind has gone blank. Anyway, anyway, it doesn't matter what that's called. We're gonna, I'm gonna be using parchment paper. So first, I'm gonna apply the torch paste using stencils that I made um, using my Icon Art stencil kit, and I will also link that below too. It is an awesome way if you want to create your own designs and make your own stencils. It's the best way to go. I mean, look at the intricate details on that. Um, it's just amazing what you can do with the Icon Art. I can't say enough good things about it. Um, if you're interested in it, I will put the link below, and if, if you use the code CREATIVE15, you'll get 15% off your order. So it's an amazing deal. The product is awesome, and the support is, oh my goodness, amazing. Um, so, check them out if you're interested. Also, um, I'm going to be using some other stencils. This one I made um, with the Icon Art. I'm just going to be using different designs. Like, this one came from Maker Studio, and I think I'm going to use, like, the, the design from the heart on the earrings. 
And then I have cheetah print and paw prints. I think I'm gonna use the cheetah print for that. And these are reusable stencils that I bought from um, Magnolia. And these are reusable stencils that I bought from Maker Studio. And I can link both of those below also. Now the, um, the link for the icon art and the link to Amazon are affiliate links. So I need to let you guys know that because that's just what we have to do. So those are my affiliate links. The um, Hobby Lobby, I'm not sure they have these online. I got these in the store. So I can try to find a link for that if you want and post that as well. And so they had all these sizes at Hobby Lobby, which I was super um, happy about that. Okay, so let's get started with these. Now, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put down the um, parchment paper. I think. No, maybe not. I will put these on the parchment paper once I have um, put the torch paste on them. And hopefully my heat press will be heated up. Yes, it's already heated up now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get started on these. And I'm just writing back on the backs of these stencils. So when I put them back on here on the backing, I put them on the correct way. This one's already done. Um, sometimes you have to fuzz the Magnolia stencils. And that just means to take some of the sticky off. But I don't think I'm going to need to do that on this one. So I'm going to get started. And what you'll need is some torch paste. And I bought this from the Icon Art website, but you can probably get this other places. But um, I got mine from Icon Art. And you're going to need like a little squeegee. I have a tub of water sitting here that I'm going to put my stencils in once I'm done because I don't want this to dry in my stencils. You never want any kind of paint or anything to dry in your stencils because it will ruin them. So make sure you get those off of there. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put out my parchment paper. So when I get done um, putting the torch paste on there, I can just lay it on the parchment paper and then take it right into the heat press. And let me put this down some more so you can see what I'm doing. There. Okay, I think you can see pretty good there. All right, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna use these, and I'm going to use the, and the reason that I'm using these again, because you know that we already made these once, and I used, I think that these, the stain is a little bit too dark, even though um, it's super pretty with that resin on there. This part's been resin, this part has not, so. I'm going to be doing using the same stencils, and I made these stencils to fit this particular size earring, so that's why I'm reusing this one again, and because it fits right on there, so I don't think that any of these will fit on any of the other earrings that I have. The, the bunny fits, but it comes off a little, so I'm going to be doing these again. And on the Marlin ones, I did two so that they would hang, you know, one one way and the other the other way. Like this. So I'm going to go ahead and lay this stencil down. And I'm going to put my, this is my drying mat that I lay my stencils on when they dry. So I'm just going to put the, the backs of the stencils over on that because I'll need to use, um, once on the Icon Art stencils, once you wash them out, um, you put the backing on there before they dry and then let them dry. So, so I'm just going to center this right on here. Just like so. Now you can do the heat gun with the torch paste, but with the earrings, because they're so thin, the heat press will do it for you and it's a lot quicker. So here's that one. I'm gonna go ahead and put the other Marlin on the other earring. This is such a cool way to make some different kind of earrings. And if you guys are local and you're wanting something to do next weekend or you need some gift ideas for Mother's Day, they're having a 
um, Mother's Day Marketplace up here on the mountain next weekend, Saturday from 8 to 2. So come on up. I'd love to see you guys. So here is the, um, the Marlins. So I'm going to go ahead and put the torch paste on here. Now I'll move that one a little. All right. This icon art stencil kit has seriously changed my crafting. I know I say that all the time, but it really has. It's amazing. All right, so I'm just going to take this little squeegee, and I'm going to get out some torch paste. I love, love, love this stuff. It is amazing. So here's what it looks like. And I'm telling you, you don't need very much. You just need a little bit. And... Um, this is what it looks like. And I mean, I think that this container was $17 or $18. And yes, that's expensive, but you get for as little as you use, it's going to be, you're going to get a ton of it. So I usually use um, a little stir and get some out and put it on the squeegee just so I am in control of how much I put on there because you don't want to use a whole lot. That is all I'm using. Okay, so you don't need a whole lot because these are tiny earrings so you're not going to need a whole lot and you don't you really don't want to use a lot and so I'm just basically spreading it all over I got something on there the stencil making sure it gets all on the wood and then you want to get any lines out of the torch face if you have any And I want to make sure that I got that good on the tail because I'm not really sure I did. You can lift it and then you can put it back down. So I missed a little tiny bit on the end of the tail. Okay. Because once you, if you lift these up, you can lay them back down if you lift it slow. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and take this, put it in my tub of water so that it doesn't dry on the stencil. And this is what it looks like right now. But it's going to get really dark when I put heat to it. It's quite amazing. And then I'm going to, once we get done with this part, then I will put stain over top of them. Uh, and I bought some new stain that was not as dark. So, um, and it's called Colonial Maple. And I'll show you what that looks like on, I actually stained a wood round that I'm going to be working on today that I'm actually going to be using the, tor the torch paste on the wood round um, but I'll be using my heat gun on that and it takes about 20 minutes so I'm not going to do a live on that even though at some point I'm going to try to get a video doing that because it's so cool and there is the other one so I'm going to drop that in the water and so there's this one and this is the wood round not stained and this is the colonial maple stain so it's not very dark at all it's got a little gold to it so that's the difference it's not much difference at all and I'm going to be doing um, wood burning this on that round so it's gonna be super cute and I will definitely show you guys that when that gets done so the next one I'm gonna do is the faith stencil and I'm going to use the same stencil on both pieces and you just um, so here's the stencil and I'm going to put it on the first one I'm just going to line it up best that I can I'm really getting excited about my vendor event because it's been a few months since I've done one. So I love doing the vendor events. So that's what it looks like. Now I'm going to go over that with the torch paste. And like I said, you don't need very much at all. That is probably too much. But we're going to go with it. And I'm not putting a ton of pressure on this. but I'm just making sure that I get the torch paste on the whole design. 
Now I'm gonna lift it up just to make sure before I pull it all the way off that I got everything covered. I have missed a little spot on the flower. So I'm just gonna go over that. And that's the other cool thing about these stencils that you can lift it up, put it right back down. And you can use these on t-shirts and that's how I do the screen print screen print t-shirts. All right, so that part, I can't get my finger under there. That part looks good. Let's check out the, okay, that looks good. So let me show it to you. So there's that. And what I think I'm gonna do is while I'm letting those pieces dry a little bit. We'll do the other ones, but I'll put these under the under the um, the heat for while I'm doing the other ones, just so that they can be drying really well. Um, and I'm just going to use the squeegee to push down the stencil. Put a little bit of torch paste on here. And I'm just going over it, making sure I get everything good. And you don't have to put a ton of pressure. All right, I missed that one. Same as the other one. All right, let's get the edge really good. That part looks good. Now let's check the bottom. All right, that looks good. So now I'm gonna put this into the tub of water. And here's the other one. I don't know about you guys, but these, this pollen and allergies is kicking my butt. My nose is running like a sieve. All right, so now I'm going to do Be Kind, which is this one. And you know what? I well, no, I'm just going to go ahead and do this one. I have a silicone mat, and these things stick to it really good. So, this shirt actually um, was done using the Icon Art also. So, it's really cool what you can do with their kit. It's quite amazing. It has completely changed everything for me. I mean, it's so nice. And the support, oh my goodness, it's out of this world. Amazing. All right, so now I'm just gonna push this down on here. I hope that you guys can see good. So there's that. Now I'm gonna put a little torch paste on here. And like I said, I'm not using much at all, hardly any. And then I'm just gonna go over it And you don't need to use a whole lot of it at all. All right, so now I'm going to pick this up and lay it. Make sure I got it all good. I did. And I'm going to lay this one on here. Try to get it lined up best I can. Then I'll push it down with the squeegee since it has torch base on it. Ah, I moved it. And these stencils are adhesive, but these, uh, the blue ones are not sticking as, as strong as the purple, which is pretty much what I want doing these. You don't want it. Okay. Now let's put some torch paste on this one. And I'm going to put Go over this really good. Try not to get too much, but I also wanna cover everything where the stencil is. And like I said, it's light pressure. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it. Let me lift and make sure, yep, it's all good. All right, so there's that one. Now let me show you these. Super cute. Now this will darken as we get it um, burned, 
with the heat. So that is super cute. All right, so what I have here are all the pieces on here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sit it underneath the heat press and let it dry a little bit and then work on these right here. And you also need to be sure when you're doing, um, when you're, because I'm gonna do the heat in increments of 15 seconds, you wanna use a new piece of parchment paper each time because if you have any torch paste on it, when you touch it, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna transfer over on your earring. So you don't wanna get any of that torch paste that's on the parchment paper onto the other pieces, cause then it will mess them up. And I did that, so. All right, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna use these. And I'm going to use the cheetah print. So that's gonna be super pretty. So what I'm gonna do, and since this is a whole piece, and I think I might, well, I think it might be all right. I'm going to lay it down on both of them and go over it like that. So I'm just laying it down there on these two and that's the only part I'm gonna put the torch paste on. And like I said, you don't need a whole lot. That's all I'm putting on there. And then I'm just gonna go over the earring, the whole earring piece with the torch paste. And I'm gonna do the other piece as well. And then I'll lift it up slow because if I need to put it back down, I can to make sure the whole earring is covered with the torch paste. So now let me lift it and look and see what it looks like. Oh, that's cool, y'all. All right, so I'm just gonna lay that there like this. Let me show you guys what that looks like. And it's gonna be dark once we heat it. So that is super cool. I am loving that. And I got a little bit of torch paste on the edge. I'm gonna wipe that off. Okay, so next, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the cheetah print again and I'm gonna do it on the circles. I think that will be really cute. See these circles. So let me get a, I'm just gonna lay this down because I don't wanna get the torch paste all over everywhere I'm working, okay. So now I'm gonna lay this down on here on a different section. Just like that. Push it down really good. And then I'm gonna go over this with the torch paste. Like I said, that's all I'm using, not much at all. So now I'm just gonna go over the whole earring where the stencil is this is gonna be super cute with the cheetah print, I think. And then once we resin it, once we put resin on it, that's gonna be really pretty. I just laid my hand right in that. So this is so easy, you guys. Okay. Then I'm gonna lift this up and see what that looks like. All right, I'm gonna sum on the side, so let me go over that again. And that's the good thing about these, you can lay them down and just keep getting it. Go over anything you missed and you're good. All right, now let's see. That one looks good. This one, I think I need to go over a little bit more. I missed some spots on that. So yeah, this is such a cool way to do the wood burning. Okay. 
Now I got a little piece of torch paste on there. I'm not sure what that's going to do, but we're going to try it and see. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put this in the water. And I'm going to wipe off. I got a little bit of torch paste there. So that's that one. And then here's the other one. And then I'm going to do the, um, I'm going to use these and do the, the heart, the designs in the heart on the earrings. If I, I think I can do both of them with this. Okay, so I'll lay this down. And that one. And then this one. And that one. Yes, that's going to be cute, I think. Well, nope, I need to get this one. Over some. I'm just trying to lay it down so that they're all covered. All right, so now we have that one. And then I'm going to put some torch paste on there. Go over it just like the other ones. And like I said, you don't need a lot of torch paste at all because you don't want too much you don't even use a whole lot when you're doing the bigger like the big rounds it's you wouldn't believe how little I use so it might sound expensive but I'm telling you you can get a ton of use out of that one little container And now I'm going to lift it up because I'm not sure I got enough on that piece. So I'm going to lift it a little and look. Yeah, that one's missing a bunch. So that's the great thing about being able to lift these. All right, so there's that one. All right, so here are these. So that's all I'm gonna do on the earring. So there's that one. I don't know if you guys can see that in the camera. All right, so here's this one. Now I'm gonna have to go out of the picture for a moment to um, do the heat press. And what I'm gonna do is lower the lid and dry those pieces for 15 seconds, actually 30 seconds, and then I'll clamp it. And then um, for 15 second increments. So let me go do that really quick. Let me put that in there. And I'm gonna need some pieces of parchment paper. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna cut them so that they so that I can use a different piece each time. All right, so I'm gonna place this over it once I clamp it, so hang tight. So I'm doing this for 15 seconds first. And it still needs to dry some more, so I'm going to put it back down. I'm not clamping it yet. I'm just lowering it and letting the heat from the heat press heat it and warm it, hopefully. So, let me just show you. And I want to make sure that these look dry. And they do look dry, so I'm gonna actually going to do it for 15 more seconds just because I'm afraid of it sticking again because I don't want to do that again. That was not fun. 
All right, so let me put this for 15 more seconds. And I think that will be dry enough. Okay, so these look dry to me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay the parchment paper on it and then I'm gonna clamp it and hope and pray that it doesn't stick. I don't think it will because of the last time I learned to let it dry longer. And these have been sitting for a few minutes anyways from when we did those, so that's a good thing. So I'm just gonna put, lay this on it and then I'm gonna put the um, top down on the heat press for 15 seconds then check it, and then do it again and again. So the heat press is set for 400 degrees, and I'm gonna do 15 seconds, either three or four times. And each time I'm gonna lay a new piece of parchment paper down in case the torch paste sticks, because we don't want that. Okay, guys, it looks like it did not stick, so that's good. Okay, so I put a new piece of parchment paper down, clamped it again, and then I'm going to do it two more times, I think. That, that I think then it will be at the, the darkness that I like. Let me show you guys what it looks like. This is what it looks like so far. And I got a little bit of torch paste on the bottom of that one. That's okay. It's going to be all right. So I'm going to do this again for 15 more seconds. And I'm probably going to do it two more times. So that was, this will be the third time, and then I think I'll do it again for another, and then it should be at the, the color I want. And then we'll do these. Okay, so like I told you, it stick, uh, the torch paste comes off on that, so if you put this back down there, it would come off on your piece in the wrong place. So I'm putting another piece on there. And it's really up to you how long, how many times you wanna do it. Um, it depends on how dark you want it. So it's really up to you on that. All right, so. So this is what we have so far. Now I'm gonna take off this one because it is, it's dark and I want it to stay at that color. So I'm gonna put this over to the side and I'm gonna go ahead and put these back under there one more time because I want them a little bit darker. And you need to be careful because it does, the pieces are going to be hot. So be careful when you're handling them. And you can also, um, well, I wouldn't recommend using the Cricut heat press on these. Because you, you really want to get, um, you really need the pressure of the heat press. So I'm actually gonna take these two off and I'm gonna run those two under one more time because they don't seem to be quite as dark as I would like. So 
So I'm going to run these under there one more time. And then I'll dry these. So here is what we have so far. And once these dry a little or cool off a little bit, I'll wipe them off with the paper towel. All right, let me sit these under here to let them dry a little bit before we get started on those. Okay, let's look at these. Yeah, that looks good. So now we have these two. That looks so good, you guys. I am loving this. And then we have the Be Kind. And I did get a little bit at the bottom, and that's okay. I will, um, I'll just wear these. I'm not going to sell those because I don't like the way that turned out. But um, I do sell these, if you're wondering, um, in my Mountain Breeze Boutique group. And also, I'll be set up this weekend. And I have another vendor event in October at down at Fifth Mountain Lake. So, I'm going to lower the lid on this for 15 seconds so I can tighten. And on this one, I'm not clamping it. I'm just drying it. Because if you don't do that, then it's going to stick and it's not going to be pretty. I'm going to do it again because it's not dry. For 15 more seconds. So I just want you to see, I don't think these are dry enough, so I'm going to do 15 more seconds, and then I'll go ahead and clamp it down, because I think they're almost dry. All right, they stuck to the top of my foam on the top of the um, heat press. So um, hopefully it didn't get that on there. But I'm going to go ahead and clamp it now. What happened was when I put the heat press down and didn't um, clamp it, the foam piece on the bottom lifted some, and so it touched the top of it. So hopefully... I can get that off of there, hopefully. Okay, guys, so far so good. Nothing is stuck. I need a bigger piece. And the other paper that comes in here is butcher paper. I just thought of that. So I'm doing 15 seconds at a time for four times. And then if it's not dark enough, I can put it under there again. So this is what we have for the other ones. So far, so good. I'm going to stain these and then resin them. Okay, so this is what comes off on the paper when you push down. That's why you don't want to reuse the same piece. Because then it'll mess up your, um, it'll, it'll put it down on the pieces. And you don't want that. Because believe me, I did that. <laughs> you don't want it. I think. 
think, one more time, and those, those will be done. And then um, these I'm going to go ahead and just go over it a little bit with paper towel, and then we can put some stain on them. And then we'll be done with these, and we can do the infusible ink. Okay, let me show you. I think these might be done enough. They do look pretty good. See, you don't want that to come up. So this is what we have so far on these. Cool, very cool. I'm loving it. And then we have these. So I'm gonna let these sit over here and dry off and these I'm not crazy about how this turned out because I didn't get the whole piece. Um, I didn't get the whole piece covered, but that's what that looks like. So I'm trashing these because I'm not crazy about them. So what I'm going to do on these, actually what I might do is I may go ahead and do the infusible ink ones. And then we'll come back and stain those since the heat press is already on. Okay, and the infusible ink has to do 60 seconds on 400. You can use the infusible ink um, using the heat, the Cricut heat press, but I'm gonna just gonna go ahead and use this one and hopefully it'll turn out. Um, but this is just the Cricut infusible ink that you can use on shirts or whatever, but I'm using this on the earrings because it's super cute. If I can get this open. And um, I love how this turns out. And it's only one time you put it under the heat press for 60 seconds and then you're done. And then I resin those. And I'll probably make a batch of resin tomorrow and resin everything that I have. Like these pieces here, I'll resin the backs when I'm doing the rest of them. I love how the resin looks on these earrings. Makes them so shiny. Alright, so. And I'm going to use the butcher paper that comes in here, not the parchment paper, just because that's what it says to use and I don't really want to mess these up. And these are really pretty flower designs. Now the, in, the um, infusible ink looks dark. I mean, uh, looks dull, but it should be black once we get finished. And then this is just solid black. I'm not going to use solid black. I'm just going to put it back in here and I'll use it for something else. But I wanted to try the flower ones out. So I'm going to lay a piece of the butcher paper down. And I'm actually going to need to cut it because it's the same thing. If you get the infusible ink on the mat or something, it will transfer over. So I'm going to try it like this. one down. I'm going to try this and see if it'll work correctly. If this paper doesn't go up, give me a fit. Let's do the circles. Okay. Make sure that my piece covers all that. Okay. So now, and this is kind of tricky because it wants to curl. So I'm, I need to cut it. need it to be cut the same size basically as that. And it's so curly. Oh, let me just lay that down. I'm going to try to cut a straight line, but I'm challenged in that area. So let's see. If I get a straight line. Because I don't want this ink to come off on my heat press. 
because it did on my other on my Cricut heat press. It did. So you're gonna lay it face down like this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some heat tape and try to tape it. Or I could just lay it on there. Let's just live on the wild side and just lay it on there and see what it does. But I have to pick it up. All right, I'm going to carry it over there, put it down, and then get it going, and then I'll come right back. So hang tight, y'all. And my mat wants to curl up, so who knows what it's going to come out like. And we're setting it for 60 seconds on 400. Okay, this is the first time that I've used the heat press with the clamp arm on this type of earring. I've usually used the Cricut heat press, so cross your fingers that it's not an epic fail. So we'll see what it looks like. Um, and if it comes out, Okay, I didn't set the timer for 60 and it went off at 15, so um, hopefully this is going to turn out. I don't know what it's going to look like, but we've got some more to try if it doesn't turn out. Um, but hopefully it will. And then what we're going to do with these pieces, these already have stain on them, so I'm going to take these and cut out some of this cute scrapbook paper. That one is too dark. All right. Um... I'm going to go ahead and start doing that while it's, but I'm going to lay this down and then I'm just going to cut it out and then we're going to use Mod Podge to attach it on there. So I'm just cutting around it. And these look really, really pretty with resin on them. I showed y'all the lemon ones. I loved how the lemon turned out. Okay, y'all, hold, cross your fingers. Icy, 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 hot, 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 hot. Okay, let me move this out of the way and see what this is gonna look like. Hopefully, it's gonna turn out. Whoa. Okay, so. This is wild looking, y'all. So this is what these look like. I don't know if you can tell. It's black, so the light may be weird. But that's going to be pretty with resin on it. But check out this. This is really cute. Cute and different. I think I'm going to try a couple more. That's really pretty. These I really like, because this one actually you can tell it's a flower. I really like that. And then this is part of it. So it is black and it will, um, I think, be really pretty with resin on it. And this is just what, this is what it does on the, on the butcher paper. So that's what would be on your mat if you didn't use something. So let's do that again, because I like how that turned out. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use this shape. And I'm going to use the same paper. And see how easy that was and fast? It's crazy. Okay, so I'm going to put these down. I 
and you kind of want to see how the flowers are going. So they're kind of going sideways. So I'm going to cut right there. Try to cut a straight line, but I'm challenged in cutting straight lines. And this paper is so hard and curly. So now, trying to get just what I need on here. And you could, I guess, cut this out, the shape of the earring, but I think if it moved any at all, it would mess it up. So that's why I'm cutting out one big piece. Okay, so let's do this. I'm gonna put it on there. Like this. And then put a piece of butcher paper over that. And you can do like Christmas ornaments or anything um, with this infusible ink on wood. Like you can get the wood um, wood ornament shapes and then put the Christmas design on there. That would be really cute. All right, so let me carry this over there, put it in the heat press. I'm going to use some heat paper to try and hold it down because it's wanting to curl up. It was wanting to curl up, so I don't know what that's going to look like. Hopefully it's going to turn out. And then we're going to move right along onto these. So that piece that I was cutting out, I'll finish that while that's going. So the infusible ink, you want to do 60 seconds on 400 degrees. And you can use the um, Cricut heat press if you want. All right, so we have that and I'm going to use the Mod Podge to glue that on there. I love butterflies, you guys. Love, love, love. So make sure you mark your calendars for next Saturday, 8 to 2 on the mountain. Mother's Day, market, uh, Mother's Day Marketplace, and they're going to have plant sale, bake sale. I'm going to have all my crafts. I'm going to have door hangers. I'm going to have the earrings that I make. I'm going to have plunder jewelry and 31 gifts. So, I will have something for everybody. I can guarantee it. So, y'all definitely come and see me. And I can't wait to see what plants they have because I don't plant any flowers outside here until after May 15th because the weather is just unpredictable. Alright, so I have these cut out. I'm just letting that cool off for a minute before I take it off. And then I'm going to use this paper on the next ones. They're just, it's just kind of, it's got like a glue gun. It's just like fun paper for the crafter. And just cutting it out around the earring shape and then we're going to glue it on. Once the Mod Podge dries, then I can sand the edges off and then, um, Put Mod Podge on. Uh, actually, I'm not going to put Mod Podge on the top. I'm going to resin them because I love the way it turns out with the resin. I loved how the lemons were. 
So let me find another little glue gun. I love these little cute scrapbook papers they sell. They're so pretty. And these are so fun and easy to make. And they're so cute. It's just something about um, seeing something that you make come together. I love it. It's very um, therapeutic for me. So there's that one. Let me cut my heat press off. So I think I'm done. Let me see if this turned out. All right, let me put this over here so y'all can see what I'm seeing at the same time. Everything sticks to these little nuts. Cut that off. Okay, so here's what I did. I used heat um, resistant tape. So I'm going to pull it all off. Y'all, check it out. How fun is that, y'all? I am loving that. So I'm telling you, once you put some resin on top of this, it's really going to bring that black out. It's kind of hard to see in the camera here, but that's really cute. Now this one, I didn't get it all the way on the side over here. Over here. So that one's going in the trash, but I did get this one. So I'll save this one. And then when I do this again, I'll make another one to match. And then all this just goes in the trash can. And y'all look how dark these are. So cute. All right. So now what I'm going to do is set all the, these on the side and then we'll go back in just a minute and we'll stain those. But real quick, I want to make these earrings with the scrapbook paper. That one is really dark. <laughs> so let's use these. And let's see what we wanna put on there. Let's do a flower one. So this is just packs of paper that I pick up at Joanne Fabrics or Hobby Lobby or um, Michael's. But I think these came from Joanne's. I get them when they're on sale. I like this one. And what I like to do on these scrapbook paper ones is um, I just resin the back of them. I don't put the, I, you actually could put this on both sides. Um, it's really up to you how you want to do it. I like to finish the backs though, whatever I'm doing, at least to have stain or resin or something on the back. And these I may just leave with the wood stain, but I definitely would resin them on the back just because I think they need to be a finished piece, in my opinion. All right, so here's that one. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a blue butterfly. I love butterflies. And then find another Do this one and these are never going to be the same because well I mean they could be but because they're designs it's hard to get too identical and when you're cutting these it does not have to be perfect because we're going to use I use a nail file or sanding block but I think a nail file does better um, I just have an old nail file that I use to file the edges so that they look similar. Okay, so here's this one. So what I'm going to do with these, and I'm going to put this down. I'm going to get, um, I'm going to use my Mod Podge, and it's just in gloss. And I'm going to put the Mod Podge on these. And then I'll go back and put the paper on them. Now, because I'm going to resin over the paper, you want to make sure you don't get any Mod Podge on your paper when you're sticking them on there. So I'm probably going to use like a piece of paper or something to rub it on instead of my hands in case I get it on my hands. I think. And I'm 
just gonna put, I use an egg crate and I just try to use whatever I have. Wayne saves these for me, so that's pretty awesome. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit. You don't need a whole lot to do these. And you can Mod Podge over the top of them instead of resin. That looks good too. It's just a preference. It's your personal preference of what what you like, really. And let me get a brush. And I did not get any water. Let me see if I have some water down here. Hang on one second. Let me get some water real quick. You always want to have some water so you can put your brush in there because you don't want this to dry on your brush. So I'm just using this brush and I'm going to just get a little bit on my brush and then I'm going to go over the piece and it, this stuff is not going to hurt you if you get it on your hands. It's kind of just like glue and you can use something to hold it. Or, um, like you can use like this little Cricut weeding tool to hold it if you want. It's, it's totally up to you. So I'm just going to get it on the top good enough for it to stick. And I don't really want a whole lot on the edge. So I'm going to make sure that I get the edge where it's not any goop on there. Gooped. Is that even a word? Gooped. And then I'm going to do the same with this one and see where I have. Ugh. You don't really want to get um, your fingers in the Mod Podge if you're going to resin the backs because it could um, transfer over and be like a big spot. And you don't you don't want that. So I'm just going to use this thing to hold it. All right, so there's that. And now I'm going to take, and I'm, I'm just using a wet wipe to make sure I get the Mod Podge off my hands so I don't get it on that paper since I'm going to resin it. So I'm just going to put the paper down on it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of parchment paper and I'm just going to rub over it because I don't want to um, get Mod Podge on that. So I'm just pressing down really good. You want to make sure you get out any wrinkles or anything or any bubbles. So I'm just pushing it down with parchment paper. That's just so I don't get any um, spots on the front. So there it is. And I will go back over and sand off the edges once it dries after I, um, before I resin it. So I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm not going to use this. I'm going to use this <laughs> to hold it. Just get a little bit on my brush and go over it. And then I'm gonna go around the edge and get off any goop that I have on the edge because you don't want that, you don't want a lot on the edge. Now I'm just going over this again and I'm just using Mod Podge that you can get at Walmart, Amazon, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Joann's, all of them carry it. Um, and I've had this jug for a long time, like years, so it doesn't really go bad. And this is gloss. So I'm going to wipe off the edge because I got a little bit on the back. 
and I don't want that on there when I'm resin, using resin. And now I'm going to put my pieces of scrapbook paper on top of the earring. And you've got some time to work with it. It doesn't dry really super fast. So you can, you got plenty of time to line it up and all that good stuff. And I'm just using the parchment paper over it to spread it out just because I don't want to get any on there on the paper because if you get any on your hand and you touch the paper, when you resin it, it's going to show up. Trust me on that because I've done it. Um, and then I'm wiping off any excess on the edges because I don't want that on the... I don't want any excess on the edge. So I'm rubbing it in and these pieces of wood have been stained already and dried. Um, I usually let the wood stain dry at least 24 hours, if not longer. These have been drying longer. Okay, so there's that one and I'm gonna go around the edge and get off any extra and that's not sticking I guess I had enough on there so there we have that one and so I'm just gonna sit those to the side to dry and now I'm gonna do these and then we'll start to stain the other pieces and then we'll be done with today's craft. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I really love doing these crafts with y'all. Um, it's very, like I said, it's therapeutic for me. I love it. And if you ever have any questions at all, please feel free to let me know, reach out and make sure you comment. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you comment on the video so you can get in on the drawing because that's one way to get an entry. Okay, so now I'm gonna put this paper on here. You can also do this with napkins or um, really anything, wrapping paper, anything that you think has a cute design that you would like to have a pair of earrings, you can use it, tissue paper, um, really any kind of paper. Just use the Mod Podge and stick it right on there. And so we're done, so I'm sticking that in the water. Move this out of the way. And so I'm just gonna line this up, put it down. It's such a cute way, or a fun way to have some cute earrings. And they're unique. And that's what we love. So, all right, so there's this one. I'm just gonna go around the edge, wipe off any excess. There is that. So that is done, you guys. All right, so now let's do some um, staining with the um, pieces we wood burned. And then we will be finished. So let me put these in the drawer. And like, um, like you can get napkins anywhere. So you could put these stars on a um, on a pair of wooden earrings and um, use Mod Podge to put that on there. Um, I bought these. I think I got these at the Dollar Tree. But you could use the flowers to put on the earrings or whatever, or you could make like a little wreath. So there's tons of things you can do with stuff like this. So I'm always out looking for fun napkins um, to put on earrings. I need to go to, um, uh, what's it called? Home Goods, because they said that they have some really cute napkins. All right, so let's get some stain on earrings. All right, so I am going to stain these earrings using the golden maple, I think. No, not, what was it? 
colonial maple. This is the wood stain that I use. And I use this on my wood rounds as well. So I'm gonna use gloves and these gloves are really ugly, but you don't wanna get the stain on your hands because it won't come off for a while. So. I'm gonna use a paper towel to apply the stain because you don't want a ton of stain on there. You just want enough to get it good and coated. And I don't think I went through and wiped any residue off of these. So let's do that real quick. I don't think it had a whole lot on them. I'm loving how these cheetah ones turned out though. That's pretty cool. And I stain both sides at the same time and then let them, um, let them dry for 24 hours. And then I'll put resin on. And I'll probably do resin either tomorrow or Monday evening. Um, just depends. So you want to shake it up really good. And I'm using this light stain because I think the, the last one I did... It's kind of dark and it kind of took away from the designs. All right. So basically all you do is just dip a little bit on the paper towel and then go over the earring. So I'm just gonna get the paper towel and then just go over it. And I do the fronts and the backs and the edges, but it pretty much goes through. Um, you just wanna make sure that you don't have any excess like drips or anything. So let me show you a comparison of what the difference is. It's not a big difference. This has stain on it and this doesn't. So it's not a big difference, but there is stain on it and it's gonna be really pretty once we put resin on them, I think. So I'm just gonna dip a little bit. Just go over the piece really quick. And I've tried using something to hold the earring and it's just easier for me just to put gloves on and do it, hold it myself. I think it comes out just as good. I get it on there really even. Um, so it comes out really nice. I love the bee kind. I think that is so cute. These will make really good gifts or that piece kind of warped a little bit. That's weird. It's kind of like, has ridges on the back. The heat press may have done that. Do you see the ridges? Isn't that weird? Hmm. That's strange. All right. Moving right along. And we could probably use a little bit darker stain, but I think this will be really pretty. It just has kind of like a golden hue to it. Got a little bit too much on there on that one. And then I'm going to do the back. that. Love it. Love, love, love it. So don't forget, next Saturday, you, you guys come and see me. I'll have all kinds of stuff. I have tons of 31 to look at. Um, tons of cash and carry plunder. And tons of resin and wooden earrings and faux leather. I also make faux leather earrings. Um, those were actually the first earrings I started making was the faux leather. 
and I quit making it for a while, and then I found some really cute faux leather at Hobby Lobby that has lemons and cherries and all that fun stuff on there, so I'm gonna be making some of those for the event. So y'all come up and see me. It's gonna be pretty on the mountain. It's a pretty drive if you just wanna get out. So check that out, you guys. Sorry for my glove. I know it's really ugly, but they save your hands for sure. So this is just a fun and fat. I mean, like we've made all these earrings in little or no time. So the resin takes about 24 hours to cure. So hopefully I'll have a lot of these ready for the show, but I do already have some that all I gotta do is put the hooks in. And there are some that I need to resin the backs. So those will definitely be ready. I'm probably gonna do a resin um, batch tomorrow. And these will get resined as well. I can't wait to see these cheetahs in resin. That's gonna be really pretty, really pretty. So, I love those. Those are turned out really nice. So, I'm really pleased with um, how the wood burning is turning out. I'm going to do a wood round here. As soon as I get off this live, I'm going to do a wood round um, with the torch paste and my heat gun. So, you guys are going to have to stay tuned for that. And I'll try to take pictures as I'm going through it because I want to start um, utilizing my blog. And... Um, and posting on there as well. I'm in a coaching group and I'm learning all kinds of new ways and things to do. So I think a blog would be fun to post all this on. So yeah, all right, you guys, look at that. We are all done. And we did a ton of earrings and little of no time. So, you guys, I hope you guys like this. Let me know if you like this kind of stuff or not. And if you want to see something different, let me know that too. Um, sorry, my allergies are killing me. So, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of these um, infusible ink earrings as well. I am loving these, you guys. So, I hope you like this video. Like I said, if you're catching this on YouTube, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. Like the video. Give it a thumbs up. Turn on your notifications so you don't miss anything. And if you're catching this on Facebook, make sure you comment on the video so you get an entry into the giveaway. So, if you don't have any questions, I'm going to hop off here for now. But thanks, guys, for tuning in. I appreciate you guys more than you know. Don't forget about next Saturday, 8 to 2, at the Bent Mountain Mercantile. It's right at the top of the mountain. You can't miss it. So come and see me, and I will be talking to y'all soon. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend, and thanks again for all your support. Thanks for tuning in, and you guys take care.